could there also I know you said there's no uh, genetic genetic differences between uh, poor, poor people and rich mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. but could there actually be? Because I can imagine. Uh, but richer people I, I'm probably saying something incredibly offensive and uh, uh, eugenically uh, adjacent but richer people <laughs> eugenically adjacent might go for better looking wives husbands and, and so on and over, over decades and decades you might get slimmer people so I th- there was an argument a little while ago about whether or not um, obesity was a social construct to some degree, infectious. Some even people said no, the answer to both is no. Clearly, yeah. I think I think there is an element of good li- good looking people marrying good looking people. Mm. Okay, bone structure, cheek structure. Mm. I know lots of ugly looking skinny people, and very nice looking uh, uh, um, fat people. I think yeah, they're going to be good good looking people and bad looking people in terms of bone structure and what have you, and they're going to be independent to their body weight. Um, whether or not fat people tend to marry fat people and skinny people tend to marry skinny people, I don't know if there is a huge um, evidence for that at any rate that the prevalence of obesity has been so recent okay. that it is highly unlikely to be the driving reason um, um, why, why that is the case. Where do you stand on uh, sort of fat beauty and and overweight mod- plus-size models and, and things? Like- is it a concern that... Would you rather be telling younger people, like, hang on, no, no, you've got to be healthier? I think there are two... That's a good question. Hmm. Okay, I, you know, you see a lot of um, when Nike, other brands are available, put out their late, latest Lycra, you know, for plus-size people. You know, they always get... Um, yelled at for for glorifying body weight. I, I think there's two ways of looking at it. First of all, um, people who are overweight and and have obesity, they have a right to exercise as well, right? And, yes. and if you if you if you're trying to shame someone from from wearing lycra to go to the gym or what have you, then I don't know. You know, by, by trying mm. to help themselves, I don't know what else you're supposed to do. Yeah. Let let alone it not being. But, but it's nice. not it's not just sports though. It's also it's not just sports. You know. Yeah. I mean, but I guess there's two things we got, we we got to keep in mind in a mature society, I'd like to think anyway. I am not a health at every weight person. I'm not. I study, I work f- at the MRC, our Medical Research Council, Metabolic Diseases Unit. We are a government-funded unit set up to study obesity, the causes and consequences, and how to fight it. I understand that obesity is a problem. So, But I think in a mature society, we need to be able to hold two distinct thoughts in our head, I'd hope. That first of all, that carrying too much fat it's going to be bad for you, okay? And we got to deal with that. But that actually people who are carrying, not to blame the people who are actually carrying too much fat. And at the end of the day, there's going to be a sector of society who are going to be larger, some too large, I agree, okay, for, for, for that. Um, but they still need clothes. They still need to wear something. And so I think that shaming them for their size is not helpful, even whilst understanding that their size is contributing to at least for some of them, their ill health. Mm, that's that's a very nuanced answer. It is a nuanced can answer. Can you say something extreme now? Can I say something extreme? I'm not going to say anything extreme. No, no, no. I lose my job. I can't lose my job. <laughs> say something completely mad that you don't really believe, and then we'll put that on the title. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Yes. No. 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 Um, no. But that's a fascinating answer, and of course, and I, I imagine if you, the more you shame people, the less they're actually going to be able to get the sort of motivation to go out and. I mean, be for better. for anyone who is who has ever changed their mind because they have been called stupid or fat or ignorant, like nobody. And any, certainly any parent can tell you it doesn't work for a child. And so I, I just don't think that is the, um, that, that is the way that you're going to do it. I, I think punitive, so A, it's not nice, and why should you be, why should yeah, be do, doing that? But I think punitive measures anyway, in order to try and tackle the uh, obesity problem on an individualized basis where where the onus of responsibility is therefore kind of shuffled over to the person with the uh, with the weight problem i don't think it's helpful i don't think it's helpful um e- e- either mm-hmm. how dangerous is it especially for young people mm-hmm. uh teenagers and things how da- how dangerous is it for them to be overweight for them it so i i guess if, if we can take one and a half steps back and just say well why is it why what is obesity I think, I think, and you might think okay. what well, that's, you might think we were discussing BMI when we started this and people, and it actually view clinically, um, a BMI of 30 and up, above 25 is considered overweight and above 30 is having someone having obesity. But that's just a number and we've discussed it doesn't take into your, your, your muscle mass. I think 
a more nuanced, and I'd like to think a more accurate way of describing what obesity is, is carrying too much fat that it begins to influence your health. And I think that is what obesity is. Okay, so then the question is, well, how much fat is too much fat? And see, then we come into a very, very interesting and complex discussion of actually how much too much fat is different for different people. Meaning that some people can carry more fat safely. Now, let's, leaving aside what our, what our ideals of beauty are. Okay. I'm just talking purely health. Mm -hmm. Okay. Metabolic health or whatever, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, all that kind of stuff. Um, there are going to be some people who can be larger than somebody else who doesn't look skinny, doesn't have a six pack, but it's actually more healthy than some people who are skinnier. And that's because of the ability to, to actually store fat in their bodies okay. and that, safely. Th this, so that's, they would have better, what would you notice that's better about those people or healthier? That's a more complex question than you might actually imagine. Answer. I think, I think, fam <laughs> I think famously, famously, um, your body shape matters. So, oh, pear shape versus apple shape in an individual. So, so whether or not you, you, you carry your weight around your bum and underneath your skin. So those, tend to be women, although not exclusively women. They tend to be women, okay? okay. They tend to be pear-shaped looking uh, uh, individuals compared to apple-shaped look looking human beings, which tend to have more carried a weight around their trunk, beer yeah. belly looking, looking to people. My now, family. they tend to be men, but not exclusively. Uh -huh. And so there is a classic example of undoubtedly, if you look at cardiovascular, uh, heart disease, and many metabolic diseases, it's more prevalent in men mm. uh, than women. Um, and that's because men tend to store fat in different places. So that's the first thing. So where you put your fat that's matters. That's fascinating. No, on top of that, though, so you have different shapes. And so therefore, largely uh, driven by your sex. Okay, largely. Uh, but that's not the only driver. The other thing which matters is how much fat you can store in each of your fat cells. And people think that um, your fat cells that you gain fat cells and lose fat cells when you gain fat and lose fat. That's not, that's not true. Your fat cells are like balloons. They get bigger when you gain weight and they get smaller when you lose weight. Okay. Now the safest, they're kind of like your muscles. You don't tend to gain or lose muscle cells. You, your muscles get bigger or smaller depending on what you do to them. And so the safest place to store fat, unsurprisingly, is in your fat because they're your professional fat storing organ. The issue is, as the balloon gr uh, of your fat cell grows, you know, grows and grows, at some point it will become full. And if it's full, i.e., it's not going to pop. But if it's but if it's full, and it can't store any more fat, your fat has to go somewhere else. And that is when you have the Ooh. issues. It goes to your muscle. It goes to your liver. It you know you become a foie gras. You know it goes into your you know kidneys and pancreas. It goes to places that are not designed to store large amounts of fat. That is when you end up with metabolic disease, uh, uh, diabetes, and and you know all kinds of other other diseases. The thing is, some people's fat can expand enormously, whereas other people's fat can't. I mean, famously, East Asian people, people that look like me, South Asian people, Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, cannot gain as much weight as, say, white people, Polynesians, okay, before we are at risk of, of diabetes. And that's because we are unable to store as much fat safely as some other cultures. Interesting. Uh, um, for, for, for that. So that, I think, is another, is another way of looking at it. Mm. How much fat can we actually store safely and we need to then work that into the into the obesity discussion what about ashkenazi jews because that's what i am i'm interested do we have a particular thing about fat that's an interesting question so i don't know about mm. your fat storage capacity or incapacity experiment on me i mean ashkenazi <laughs> um, um, jews ha have uh propensity for a number of other diseases I'm not, I'm just trying to think. We get Crohn's. There's Crohn's. There's going to be a number of autoimmune conditions that, that are, that are going to be there. Um, I don't know if famously you guys get more type two diabetes than mm. say Chinese folks or South Asian folks. I should no. know. But well, know you can experiment on me later. I can experiment. We'll, we'll come, do that. Report to me after. What a date we will have. This will be fantastic. <laughs> we already had lunch in the cafe. Yeah, now we'll be fantastic. doing this. Yes. Um, okay. What are some of the psychological factors that would lead to somebody not just i mean i was looking at james gandolfini you know from the sopranos last night there was a video it was so sad you saw how big he got before he had a heart attack he was very young i don't know what he was actually but 50s maybe um Too really young. yeah yeah he was just yeah so and we do, we can't speculate about his psyche i suppose but what what happens to people why are they why do they let that happen 
So I guess the question is, well, what I study the genetics of body weight and hence the genetics of obesity. So I guess we got to kind of come back to, well, you know, what is it about your genes that actually, you know, increases your likelihood? increases your likelihood of obesity. And whenever I say that I study the genetics of body weight, people think I'm anti-physics. I'm not anti-physics. I do understand that the only way to gain weight is to eat more than you are burning, and the only way to lose weight is to burn more than you're eating. There's no magic. It is physics. And so I guess an issue is that body weight, obesity, either whether or not you're small, medium, or large, is perceived as a simple problem. To just eat less. Dude, you need to eat more, okay, for for do, doing yeah. something like this. Exercise more. Exercise. Mm. Oh no, I've broken a can <laughs> of worms. <laughs> oh, you can't really get- we'll get to exercise in a second, okay. but actually, and and the reason why, because of the yin to the yang, okay, um, the genetics of our body weight is the genetics of how uh, we now know. I'm stating an unequivocal fact before people start atting me that the genetics of body weight is, by its very definition, the genetics of how our brain influences our feeding behavior. Now, but there are a myriad of different reasons why we eat. I mean, some people eat because they're hungry. That's We understand that. We understand that feeling. Some people happen to be hungrier than other people, for example. Um, we might eat because we take more food to get filled up. Different genes, by the way. <laughs> okay. And and so you might eat more because you don't, you don't feel the same. You might eat because you get stressed. Okay. Comfort eating. And there's some people, half, I would say 50% of the population eat when they get stressed. 50% of the population stop eating when they get stressed. So my wife, for example, the moment she gets stressed, she loses. Now, there's a distinction between tiger stress coming after you. Everyone reacts the same. You run like hell. You're not interested in food for okay. obvious reasons. I'm talking about work kind of stress, the modern day stress. Why is it that there's a diametric opposite response to exactly the same hormone? It's cortisol that goes up. So when I'm stressed, my cortisol goes up. When you're stressed, your cortisol goes up. But you could stop eating and I could I, I could eat lo loads. I eat. So do I. Big <laughs> bowl of noodles. And yeah. that's a classic example of why some people might, when under a stressful condition or situation, end up eating more than my need. So covid Okay, a cl classic example: people going, oh, you know, people's body weights have um, have have gone up over um, during the during the lockdown. True, accurate, um, but not everybody's has. And I think part of the reason why this COVID has driven it up is because suddenly you've put a chronic stressor on the entire population. It's like suddenly we're rats in a cage. Okay, literally. And 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 how come? Oh, how come some people's body weights went up because it was stressful? We didn't know when it was going to uh, anything was going to happen. You end up eating more. Um. So mm -hmm. those those are those are examples. So when we go back to why has someone let themselves become like that? I think you've got to sort of ask, well, what has led them to eat? How much of it is biological? How much of it might be psychological? Um, there are people who eat without thinking. We know we 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 know those people. In the cinema, sometimes you have the popcorn and suddenly oh, it's yeah. gone. What the hell is that? You don't. Oh my god! I didn't, yeah. Did I enjoy that? <laughs> I don't know if I did. <laughs> and so, those are what the genes actually um, influence. They're not mutually exclusive. So people have a mix of different reasons why they find it more difficult to say no to food than no to food than others. Interesting. I guess as I was saying to you before, a lot of my channel heretics is supposed to be about any kind of heretic. Yeah. So. If anyone's watching and you like this, because this is not a lot of it became the culture wars, and I don't want it to just be like that. Yeah. So if you're watching this and you like that it's not just culture wars, that, I know it's such a thing. Just hit the like thing and do make sure to subscribe on this video, share this video, because then I get more subscribers from this video, and then you get to have. But one of the main aspects of the culture wars is sort of a hardware versus software thing, which yep. I heard Douglas Murray talking about, right. and a lot of people are saying, look, if it's your hardware. You shouldn't be blamed for it. Uh, if you have a skin color, whatever it is, you know, you don't get blamed because other people of your skin. I don't get blamed as an Ashkenazi Jew because of things that Harvey Weinstein does and so on. You know, we, we've come to terms with that. And that's why I think obesity is such a difficult one because people are going, okay, well, if it's their hardware and they're just wired that way, how dare I say anything? And yes, you should have two seats on a plane. Why not? And if I have to squish up, that's, that's okay because, no. and if it's software, it's because that person's not disciplined enough. And then you're going, well, hang on a minute. Why should I have? have to be all squashed and why should I have less food? What do we do with that? So you're absolutely right. So a couple of things. First of all, it's not a pure... I mean, it's just interesting. Okay, how much? Like, no one would blame you for your height, right? If you if you were you, you walk on a plane, you're six foot four. I'm five foot nine, right? So there's a huge difference, half a foot difference between us. And we sat on the plane. I take up less space. You take up more space. No one would blame you for it. Hardware, okay, hardware. However, it's not purely hardware. 
So in other words, if you look at what we call heritability, now heritability is a term that geneticists use to say, well, how much of a variation of a specific trait, height, okay, it's going to be down to genes versus environment. So heritability of height, for example, is around 80%. Now it's yin to yang. So in other words, if it's 80% heritability for height, then it's roughly speaking 20% the role of the environment. And you might think, well, what could that be? Well, what did you eat as a kid? Okay. Lot you know, pasta, you're a, pasta and tuna. But you probably ate well, you did this. Now imagine if you were malnourished as a child, even with all the genes that you actually have, you're going to be shorter. Okay. Right. Now, th that's the heritability of height. But height, you remember, is unidirectional. You grow, you mm. don't shrink. You shrink later when you're old for different reasons, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you, once you reach the maximum height, you reach your maximum height. It's non-volatile, okay? Now, body weight. Heritability of body weight, when you do all the same maths, when we look at twins, in particular, when we look at twins, then heritability of body weight is somewhere between um, 50 to 70%, okay? About 70% in identical twins. So it's not as high as height, okay? But it's not zero. And so I think when you begin to say, is it hardware or software? and you take a trait which you think is purely hardware, you'd be surprised how much software is involved. Now, as I said, for obesity, roughly speaking, 50 to 70%, we can discuss why there's a range in a second, but it's not as high as height, but there definitely is a lot of biology, mm -hmm. um, um, biology involved.